we're going to talk about the foundations you need for your music career as a professional artist. Today's guest is Mr. Henry Harris. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Christian Musicpreneur Podcast, where we provide tips, tools, techniques, and resources to help you grow your ministry. I'm your host, Simone Henry, a business coach and mentor for independent Christian recording artists. I want to say a big welcome to Mr. Henry Harris for being with me today. Mr. Harris is a, um, he's the founder of Strategic Music Partnerships, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that was created to work in partnership with its members, creating content that educates, informs, and inspires music artists. In 2011, he founded the Excellence in Music Academy, an organization committed to education, motivation, and recognition of artists who desire to learn the music business. A music industry veteran, Mr. Harris holds a Master of Science in Management, Bachelor of Science degree in Business Management, a graduate certificate in leadership management and associate of science degree in information technology. So he's got a ton of degrees. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Harris. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. And uh, it's a pleasure being here as your guest. Oh, thank you so much. So you, you first, rattle, uh, you, huh? go no, ahead. Go ahead. I'm, no, I was just saying, you, you mentioned a whole lot of paper there. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we can turn it. Hopefully we can turn it into greenbacks or some crypto, one or the other. <laughs> well, yeah, crypto is a, a big, big conversation nowadays. Actually, last yeah. week I, I spoke to a guy who is working with an organization that is allowing. Um, they're building a platform where artists, music artists, can use their platform to sell NFTs and make money from them. So it's definitely something that's cutting edge and um, and artists should know about it. So um, one of the things that I was talking to him about was like, you know, do you need, do you need a fan base in order to do this? Because he was saying, well, with his platform, they, they go out and they, they do a lot of promotion to kind of gather people, which is great. But you as an artist, I would think you need to have your own people coming, your own um, that because that makes it a win-win, right? Because other people's yeah. other people's fans are are going to be seeing your stuff, but you want you want to kind of pay it forward and have your fans seeing their stuff too, right? So you are a music business professional, um, and yes, we did mention a ton of paper that you have <laughs> that you have a whole ton of degrees and everything. How are you using these degrees and all this? Uh, um, all this schooling that you've gotten to help artists? Well, um, it's definitely transferable because um, business, when you're talking about business management, when you're talking about um, uh, teaching artists the business of music, the two go hand in hand because where it, it allows me to see both sides of the street, so to speak, which means that, I mean, years ago, I was an artist myself, but I was an artist and I didn't know it. So, and the reason I didn't know it because I didn't understand who I was. Hmm. I was just a person who enjoyed playing music, started off playing drums, um, moved to the tabletop organs and then banging on my mother's piano. I know she, she's like pulling her hair out behind that. Hey, stop that banging, you know, but <laughs> it, what it, what, what, what it did was it, uh, it prepared me for the things that I do now. And the organization that we have called the Excellence in Music Academy program which is a subsidiary of Strategic Music Partnerships that you mentioned, 501c3, 
the EMA program, uh, the vision, the vision of both organizations is to teach the business of music. I'm sorry, let me correct that. It's to teach everyone the business of music because that's a vision and that's mm -hmm. the future goal. Mm -hmm. But the mission is to teach music artists the business of music and to help them create quality content that inspires the music arts. So you see, uh, ultimate goal is for everybody to learn the business of music who desires to learn it. And then the mission, of course, is teaching them. So that having these degrees and, and being having the uh, training and business management allows me to see the business side of the music business. Okay. So that's how they work together. So um, how does the how does EMA and SMP do that? What do you what do you actually do if an artist comes to you and say, "Hey, I need to know the business of music"? What what happens first? Okay. Well, we we there's two there's two avenues of thoughts here. Um, number one, we have a series of classes called the um, Building Your Music Business Basic Foundation. We call it MBBF for short. And the purpose of that class is to teach artists how to build the music business foundation because if, if they're able to build this foundation, then that puts them on the right road to establishing a legacy. So we have a series of classes. At one point when we first started, the classes only took place once a year where we would have a series of classes uh, give them, you know, have a little graduation ceremony, do a concert at the end of the year, and that was that. But now we've kind of moved to having multiple classes throughout the year. So, and we've we set up the classes that sort of like takes them through a flow chart of building a music business foundation, which is an online course. Okay. It's strictly online. They don't have to travel anywhere. They don't have to come into the classroom, put their feet up on the desk, or they can stay home and do that. All they have to do is get online. And so how that's how we do it. We offer a series of online classes. And the last series that we did, it included 13, yeah, I think the total was 13 sessions. And, and, and like our final session, which is a round table discussion takes place next week. So that's how we do it. We do it online. And if so, if an artist comes to us, you know, we offer them the opportunity to join our classes. Doesn't matter what genre of music the artist is involved in. We offer that to them first. If they say, well, I have this short term urgent need to do A, B, C, and D, then we offer them our consultant services. Whereas we would sit with the artists to uh, find out where are they? Where are they in this music space? Because, um, you know, first, most artists, first thing they wanna do, write a song, jump in the studio, do a single release, do an EP release or whatever and then they figure that they're out there. So if we run into those, those type of artists, we, we, we do the best that we can by consulting with them, but we also, er, we also urge them to consider taking the classes. Okay. So when they take these classes, what kinds of things are they learning? Okay, when they, when we, when they take the classes, the very first, module that we deal with. We, we put it in, a, in a, it's, it's sort of like in a seven step series of classes, if you will. But the very first thing that we, we, we deal with in the classes, the very first modules, and I say plural because it takes about five or six sessions to deal with metadata. So the very first thing that we teach the audience is how to deal with metadata. And metadata in this meta world is, you know, name of the artist, name of the song, 
codes, numbers, everything that's attached to the specific alpha, alpha numerical type data in order to control that data and make it yours. And it's called metadata. Now, we know well, that there's we, a word. Yeah, ahead, can I sorry. interrupt you um, right there? Mm -hmm. Why is metadata so important? Why do they need to Met have that? And why is it, um, I think one of the things I learned from you um, in, your, in your last presentation at the IGAA last year was that this is so big. <laughs> It's so big. It is so big. Um, why Why is it so big? And why do artists really need to know that? Well, metadata, it, it, this, in my opinion, and, and a lot of other uh, persons who teach the business of music and people who do research, metadata is so big because it's your identifiers. It identifies you. It attaches you to the content that you create. And then it controls your revenue stream because if your revenue if if you create if you create content and you expect to create a legacy a lot part of the the reason why you create this content is because you're trying to earn a living or you're trying to earn revenue you're trying to build your fan base and you want your fans to purchase your product and so forth and you're trying to establish a brand you can establish a brand by just getting a so-called, uh, I mean, not a so-called, but by just getting a copyright, okay? You can get a copyright, you can get a trademark, you can register, you can do all of these things in order for the government to support you just in case somebody infringes upon you. But metadata is sort of like the glue that holds all of this stuff together. And it's very important. Because if you don't get the name right, if you call it, if, if your name is one thing, uh, we've run into, let's say artists doing this, we've run into artists that, um, let's say they put out music three, four years ago, right? And then they're ready to put out a new piece of music, but now they are a pastor, okay? So they will go, and put the music out and say, this song is by Pastor ABC. But five years ago, they were just ABC. So now when you put the music out and you send it out and you put it on the digital service providers and so forth, you got these multiple accounts. You got one account that's ABC. You got the other account, Pastor ABC. So you got all of these different variables out there. But it, so if you're not in control or have the metadata glue holding it together, then your revenue is gonna be going in all different routes because now you're calling yourself different things. Mm -hmm. So when people go to play your music or purchase your music, they may hesitate and say, well, this is not the artist I'm looking for because he's a pastor. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So it's very right. important and to have that are, metadata consistent. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Names can be so confusing. Um, right. I've seen it with, with married women who have hyphenated right. names. Sometimes right. the name is hyphenated and sometimes it's not. And it's like, okay, well, if it's hyphenated over here, you're, you're getting credit for these particular songs and it's not hyphenated over here so you may not be getting credit for those songs or it's under a completely right. different account and it's all confused it's all confused and now it's, and some women and and some men for that matter will get married and never change their name because they are known by a particular name and they figure that if i hyphen my name or change my name then people are not going to know me for who I am. You see what I mean? And they may say, "Well, we thought you were. Um, uh, we thought you were. Uh, let's say um, Mark McGuire or somebody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you put that hyphen in there and say Mark Williams, hyphen McGuire, whatever. So you kind of change the metadata. So the, the the thing with music, with the music business, is that that metadata has to be consistent. And so. If but if you're gonna use that pastor name, okay, uh, with the music, then you pull all of those other songs until they under the same umbrella, 
that way you're not going to have the multiple accounts out there. You got the revenues coming in where they're supposed to come in. And, they, and you got these other identifiers like the ISRC code, UPC code, and other things that will help keep your revenue pointed in the right direction. That's why it's so important. Okay. That's the payment structure. Now, you see, you asked about the other things that we teach. So what we do, we go into five different classes of just metadata and coding, okay? After that, you saying, okay, now we can do and talk about some artist development and management if you want it, okay? So that's the next series, artist development and management. Then the next series of classes after that is finances for artists because he, somebody has to tell you whether it's better to have an LLC or C Corp or how to structure your publishing. If you're gonna have publishing, do you just put it under your sole proprietor name or do you put it under some type of, um, you know, like I said, LLC or C Corp. So we do the financing. And then of course, in that series of classes, the coach and the instructor talks about taxes for artists, you know, making sure that when they go and perform, they understand why a client may ask them for a 1099 or a, 90 or a W-9 or whatever the case may be. That's why they teach it and I don't, but they, you got have to understand, you can't just get mad and say, well, just give me my money, pay me, <laughs> pay me in my hand. Mm -hmm. But the client has said, hey, I got to account for this because if it's over $600, yeah. which most events will be, then I'm going to have to put it on, I'm going to have to put it down as a line item. Right. So I can't just give you $600 like it used to be. And that's another, that's, prob that's a problem, Simone, with part of the business of music and some of these genres of music out here for too long, it's been paid straight to the hand. Yeah, yeah. And, if, and when that's done, when that's done, of course, your numbers are going to be so low as a genre because it's like, hey, it ain't, nobody's it's accounting like, for it. Yeah, nobody's yeah. accounting for it. So it's not selling it out. It's not so much selling it out your trunk. It's paying you when you open the trunk. <laughs> you see what I mean? So <laughs> right. that's the way we see that. Right. It's also, you know, making sure that we can we know where the money is flowing and how it's flowing. That's correct. And you know, right. um, and being able to account for, well, who did I pay and what did I pay for? And being, being right. on the up and up as a business should be. Um, right. I'm glad that, that you're out here teaching artists really how to be entrepreneurs because that's ultimately right. what's that's happening. What it is. Right. You know, they're, they're becoming business owners. If you are, as an artist, if you are not just doing this as a hobby, you're actually trying to sell your music, you're recording it, you're putting it up on Spotify and all these different platforms, and you're trying to get paid for it, then yeah, it's time to look at your ministry as a business, you know? Um, and once all of this, I heard an artist, she, um, she said this to me once, you know, when you get your business straight, now you can minister with that much more gusto because the oh, business absolutely. is straight, you know, and all of that is taken care of. So you get up on that stage or you're in front of people and you're performing and you're, you know, you're doing your thing, you know, you can really put your whole heart into ministering and putting that message out there to the people that you're ministering to so now there were uh two more pieces that we we discuss in reference to the, the training and that is then we go into songwriting um songwriting and copyright um, issues that the uh, songwriter instructor talks about and then we do a series, we do a segment or module on performance adequate, you know, performance techniques and adequate, which is, and that's the ending class. So then right after that, we have what we call a round table discussion, which means that now it's time to bring all this back together and to see if there's any questions or anything that we may have missed. And, you know, we get the artists to, ask questions they have to go through their notes and say well 
I remember you saying this and I tried to do this and I've had this problem or whatever. Now's the time where we can round table it together, finish it out. And then at that point, that series is over. Okay. That sounds like a, um, a pretty full and well-rounded class set of classes yes. that, that the artists right. are going through. So by the right. time they're done, they feel like, okay, I'm an artist, I am fully developed, I am ready to go out there and put my music out to the world. Right, and it's still it's still going to be, you know, I found out because, you know, I, and you know for yourself, you know, based on your background, your professional skill set, and I know myself as a telecommunications systems technician, we can be taught a whole lot of book knowledge and a whole lot of series of, uh, you know, policies, regulations, and, you know, schematics and all this other stuff. But practical application is what gives you, <laughs> it, it gives you the core. It lets you know that you, you got this because yeah. I'll never forget when I first finished my, when I was in telecommunications, I first finished the uh, basic telecommunication school they gave me a truck and they gave me a stack of orders and said, hey, we'll see you, we'll see you later on when you finish them. <laughs> you know, I'm all the way across town, you know, and some of the, you know, some of the uh, certain neighborhoods and stuff like that, that may require a partner to be out with you. And I'm out there by myself. So we're out in these certain neighborhoods and we out crawling around on people's floor, trying to trace the wire and connect the wire. You get frustrated. Because you, even though you've had the training, mm -hmm. every situation is different. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. <laughs> you come into the situations like, hey, then you realize and say, oh, I found the trouble. The wire's cut. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, that was just a little side story to say that even though we teach artists the business of music, they still going to have to apply. Absolutely. And, They're... You know, like, there's a big difference between the knowledge in your head and the knowledge right. you get as you're working through it on the ground, right? So that's, that's one of the, one of, um, I have a sign off on my podcast is never give up and take action because right. if you don't take action, then none of this is worth anything, really. It's just right. sitting in your head, not doing anything, you right. know? Only, only taking action and implementing what it is that you learn can you be successful. And sometimes you have to learn the hard way because I, I remember, you know, one time I was, you know, trying to fix something and accidentally stuck the screwdriver. The screwdriver hit the wrong wire and it pop, you know, popped, you know, popped out and kind of, you know, gave a little smudge on the side of the wall. But I'm like, hey. I'm just well, glad hey, to be that's alive didn't today. happen on you, right? That's yeah. correct. I'm just so happy. I was glad to be alive. I'm like saying, hey, I won't do that no more. So I know. Wow. And that's the same thing in the business of music. You you learn, but sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way because it's yeah. not just all about, you know, it's not about getting on radio, just getting on radio and do cert doing certain things, but you just have to be the all around music person if this is the field that you desire to go absolutely to establish it absolutely so i also heard that you have a roku channel so tell yeah. us about that yeah we had the roku channel which is called smp network um it's you know it had been in the beta test for about a year and then we finally rolled it out and it's up and running. Uh, what we say to artists who may be watching this podcast, if you are interested in, um, you have videos or any other content that you may wish to uh, have us consider, send it to us. And I'm sure that uh, Simone will allow me to give out my email address when we're oh, absolutely. done. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, she'll, and she'll be able to provide the email address so you send us your content or just send us something that we can, you know, watch and we would consider putting it on the channel because it is, it was, is, it is not a channel that's set up just to, to get people to pay to be on it because 
here, here again, we are 501c3. So the things that we're trying to do is to set up things that's gonna be accessible to the uh, people that we serve, which is for the most part, a lot of the people that we've served have been undeveloped and underserved, you know, people of color, you know. Um, and a lot of them may not have had access to television or to a television streaming channel, like what that uh, s and network is. Because I know back in the day, a lot of people used to send their videos out to BET. And as BET was growing, you know, they, a lot of them didn't get on BET because they, you know, they, you know, for one reason or another. So that's what we do with s and Network. It is on the Roku platform only, but um, I found out something interesting about Roku the uh, last couple of days, and that is they have a whole series of channels that are live channels. So, oh, interesting. Um, and I think it just works on, even though you're supposed to have a device in order to look at the Roku, I think they, they I don't know if they have it set up so that if you have a smart TV, you can have the Roku um, live app and see all the live channels. That way, a lot of people don't really have to have cable TV because they got a whole series of live channels, just like mm -hmm. some of these other uh, manufacturers are coming out with. And I think that's where we're going. Yeah is to provide, because I know um, we had a major channel go out the other day. We was watching a show and we were able to go to the Paramount Network and watch that same channel live. Okay. Television is changing. Yes, it is. It is. And, um, you know, as you say that, it, it brings to mind how everything... <clears throat> Everything is changing. How we yes. how we handle money, how um, how we get together for events because of yes. the pandemic. Everything has kind of gone online, but now we're kind of in this hybrid situation. A lot of people are doing are doing uh, events live, but also online. And that's right. Um, you know, the music industry has changed over the last 20, 30 years, and artists have to catch up and not think as not think in the old ways like they did all always you know now with the age of of um social media and and basically your own putting your own content out there and owning it and being able to do with it what you want you know we're in a different world now well, um, oh absolutely absolutely so we have to kind of roll with the changes that come and adjust and pivot and try some new things that things that may have worked in the past don't work today. So um, I am thankful that you are here to help us and to teach us, uh, help us learn about the music business. And so that we can, you know, we can keep going forward and we can be successful in it. Um, so tell us how we can contact you. And um, are you, it, are you giving away anything today? Are you giving away a, a, a Roku? I'm giving device? away a song. Are you giving away a heart. song? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, let's do this first. People can contact me. Um, I can be reached at uh, H Harris, that's H H A R R I S, at strategicema.org hharris at strategicema.org. That's how you can reach me if you want to submit content to us, if you want to find out about our classes, if you just want to have a consultation, you want to talk to us and so forth, you can reach us on that email address. I'm not as sophisticated yet as a lot of other folks out there where you can set up a meeting on the platform and <laughs> You know, and we we approve it and do all these other things, but we're getting there. But, you know, it just takes more folks, you know, to help us along the way. But anyway, uh, and and I like to because I I mentioned the Roku channel, we're willing to uh, do a giveaway of a Roku device, and I would I would defer that to um, Simone and her team to be able to come up with how 
best to go about doing that. All she has to do is just let us know and then um, provide the information to us and we'll get that uh, device sent out to them by way of, you know, Amazon or something like that, whereas you don't have to worry about us shipping it. It'll come directly to you. So, okay. so well, just I let us what know. I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to match that. So, um, you know, somebody signs up for, for my new program and also signs up for your classes, they'll, okay. get, they'll get a Roku device. How about that? Yeah, so that's that's great, and I'll make sure to. I'll make sure that, and then and to to sign up for the classes and to find out more information about the classes, you go to our website, which is www.strategicmp.org. www.strategicmp.org. Fantastic! Thank you so much. I'm gonna include all of those links in the show notes, so not to worry that you don't remember it. Um, and thank you so much for being here today, Mr. Harris. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. You know, I didn't get the chance to sing and play my song, but it's okay. Well, maybe we'll do that I, next uh, time you come. <laughs> like I said, you can you know, play it. Maybe uh, I'll sing a little something. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> we can get it going. Yeah, I, you know, I got a guitar over there hanging on the wall. I got keyboard in the other room. So, you know, we, we keep music going. And that's the thing. If you like and enjoy what you do, you know, um, and I've heard some people talk about, you know, how hard people should be working and what they should be doing and so forth. And then somebody else came back and said, well, you know, there's a lot of people that work hard every day and they're still, still struggling, you know, but sometimes if you add that enjoyment to that, to that work, I think success will come. It's just, it may take a little bit longer. And you may get to the point where you say, well, now all of a sudden I get to do this and do that. Well, sometimes, you know, delayed is not all, I mean, de delayed is not always denied. So just keep that in mind and um, continue to um, move forward in your music journey and you'll be good. Absolutely. Like I we said, so. never. Never give up and take action. Never give up. That's the only way take it's action. gonna work. Yeah, yeah do something, you know, mm -hmm. don't, just don't, and don't, you know, don't try to put others down while you're trying to do something because they may be trying to do something too. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. I know you gotta go, we'll talk soon. Okay. All right, all right, Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Too many artists, don't have the audience and fan base necessary to make the kind of impact they want or the income they need to sustain their careers. They're frustrated by working hard day by day without getting any traction. Eshe Music provides a simple evergreen process for getting more listeners and followers and teaching them how to be true fans. You will be able to focus on your music and make an impact while generating constant income. To find out more, sign up for my free three-part video course that shows you how to build that strong fan base. Go to eshemusic.com slash more fans. That's E-C-H-E music.com slash more fans. See you there. Thanks for listening to the Christian Musicpreneur podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot to me if you would like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Feel free to share your takeaways in the comment section below and join my free Facebook group, Christian Recording Artists Seeking Freedom. See you next time and remember to take action and never give up.